Next, a meeting of the House Government Reform and Oversight Committee. The committee met today to take a third vote on whether to grant immunity to four witnesses in their campaign fundraising investigation. Two previous votes failed when the committee did not obtain the two-thirds majority needed for the immunity motion to pass. Congressman Dan Burton of Indiana chairs the half-hour meeting. Committee will come to order. Uh, good afternoon. A quorum being present. The Committee on Government Reform and Oversight uh, will start conducting its business. The committee is assembled today to consider two different matters. First, the granting of congressional immunity to four witnesses in the committee's investigation. And second, certain changes to the committee's rules. I ask unanimous consent that all members' written statements be included in the record and without objection so ordered. Uh, I now recognize myself for such time as I may consume to make an opening statement. We're meeting for a third time to vote on granting immunity to four witnesses. Once again, we'll vote on immunity for two employees of Johnny Chung. We'll vote on immunity for Kent Law, Ted Seong's business partner. And we'll vote for immunity on Larry Wong, who was involved in fundraising in California in 1992. We've had two votes on these witnesses over the past two months and we had party line votes both times and did not grant immunity. Today we're going to try to work things out and vote one more time. We've had our differences on this com committee. There's no doubt about that. We've had a lot of acrimony, but it's time to put that behind us. The people have a right to know. They have a right to know if the Chinese government tried to influence our elections. They have a right to know if our foreign policy is affected or was affected by contributions. It's our job to find out. I think it would be a good idea for us to stop for a minute and think about what's happened in the two months since our first immunity vote. In May, the New York Times reported that Johnny Chung funneled money to the DNC directly from a senior officer in the People's Liberation Army. The Times reported that Mr. Chung has admitted to receiving $300,000 from Liu Chao Yang. She is a lieutenant colonel in the People's Liberation Army, and she's the daughter of a senior Chinese general. She's the managing director of China Aerospace International. Mr. Chung reportedly told the Justice Department that he gave close to $100,000 of that money to Democrat campaigns. This weekend, the Washington Post reported new revelations. According to the Post, Johnny Chung has told the Justice Department that he believes that senior DNC fundraisers knew that he was giving foreign money to the campaign, which is a clear-cut violation of law. With regard to Ted Seong, I think the story is pretty well understood. He and his family gave $400,000 to the Democrat Party. They gave $150,000 to Republican causes. The evidence pretty clearly shows that most of the money came directly from overseas. Mr. Xiong has apparently made a fortune selling Chinese cigarettes all over the world. Mr. Xiong fled the country when his name started to appear in the press. Sixteen members of his family and business associates have either fled the country or live overseas and refused to be interviewed. Eight members of his family and friends have taken the fifth. We have very strong indications here that serious crimes were committed. We have allegations that the Chinese government tried to influence our elections. We have allegations that Chinese cigarette money was funneled into our political campaigns and our process, with or without the knowledge of the recipients. What were they looking for and what were they trying to get in return for their money? The American people have a right to know. They have a right to some answers, and our job is to try to get them. These witnesses we are voting on today will shed new light on the actions of Johnny Chung and Ted Siong. I don't expect them to tell us everything we need to know. They won't resolve all of the unanswered, unanswered questions, but they will move us in the right direction. Last month, the House voted unanimously to call on us to immunize these witnesses and hear their testimony. Not a single member of this committee, Democrat or Republican, voted against that resolution. After a great deal of thought, we on our side have said we are willing to make some changes. We are willing to meet our Democrat colleagues halfway to get the job done. Let me start out by saying that our rules are not unfair and they are not unusual. They are the same basic rules that were used in the Iran-Contra investigation and the October surprise investigation. 
What is unfair is that we have faced stonewalling and stalling tactics by the White House. What is unusual is that we've had 94 witnesses take the Fifth Amendment or flee the country to avoid testifying. That's the heart of the problem. But the American people are tired of arguing. They are tired of delays, and they expect us to work out our differences and move ahead. So that's what we're going to try to do today. My Democrat colleagues and Mr. Waxman asked for three rules changes before they would vote for immunity. We have offered to give them two and a half, and two and a half out of three is pretty good. You have asked that we change the way we conduct depositions. We're prepared to agree to that. You've asked that we change the rules on how we release documents to the public. We're prepared to agree to that. You've asked that we hold committee votes on subpoenas that you don't agree to. We've offered you a very reasonable alternative to that request. We have offered to make our five-member working group meet to vote on any subpoenas that you oppose, and I've pledged to abide by the working group's decisions. That's two and a half out of three. I think we've gone the extra mile to try to work out an agreement. These are not cosmetic changes. This is a serious proposal. We're prepared to give up some things that we didn't want to give up. If we're going to reach a compromise, both sides are going to have to give some ground. We've had two productive meetings to discuss these issues. Mr. Waxman and I were joined by Chris Shays on this side of the aisle and Gary Condit on your side of the aisle. I want to thank Mr. Condit and Mr. Shays for being so helpful in trying to bridge the gaps. I want to thank Mr. Waxman for taking the time to work with us on this. Obviously, we have not resolved all of our differences. That probably is not possible. But I believe that we have made a, a very reasonable offer. I hope that my friends on the Democrat side will agree so that we can move forward. I think we should stop and think for a minute about the seriousness of what we're investigating. Millions of dollars in foreign contributions have been returned by the DNC. New evidence has emerged that the Chinese Communist government has tried to influence our elections. Ninety-four people have either taken the Fifth Amendment or fled the country to avoid testifying. The American people have a right to know what happened. We have four witnesses who are prepared to tell them if they get immunity. The Justice Department has signed off on each one of these witnesses. There is absolutely no justification for any further delays. I urge all of my colleagues, both Democrats and Republicans, on both sides to support immunity and to help us move ahead. And with that, I'll yield to my colleague, Mr. Waxman. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's no secret that I believe that this uh, investigation has uh, not been a useful one. Uh, this has been, and I is, and I expect will be, in, likely to continue to be an investigation in some uh, disarray. We have the Speaker creating a new select uh, committee chaired by Representative Cox, which is directed to investigate any campaign contributions that may have or originated with the Chinese government. So we're even less relevant than we were uh, two months ago. Having said that, I'm prepared to recommend uh, to my Democratic colleagues that we support your immunity request. I and other Demo Democratic members of this committee have always said that we don't oppose giving immunity to these four witnesses. We've never opposed giving them immunity. And we voted on the House floor uh, to uh, state that fact. Our problem has been with the way this investigation has been uh, conducted. In fact, when the issue of immunity was considered, we all voted for it and made it clear that our problems were with the process, not the request. Uh, today, for the first time in the course of this investigation, you're willing to make some accommodations to the Democratic minority, and your willingness to amend the rules to address two of the serious concerns we have had uh, deserves a gesture of bipartisanship in return. So I'll vote for immunity. Although I will support immunity, I don't believe that these rules changes change my misgivings about the fairness of the investigation. Mr. Chairman, you talked about how it's not unprecedented to have the rules under which you've operated to issue subpoenas. And that's a rule that you're not willing to change as we have requested. Prior to 1996, no chairman in the history of the Congress has ever unilaterally issued subpoenas. 
you've already done so 500 times. And as we look at those 500 subpoenas that have been issued, almost all have been sent to Democratic targets. You routine, routinely deny or frequently never even respond to requests that we have made on the Democratic side uh, for uh, uh, subpoenas that would uh, involve the Republican Party or some of their supporters and contributors that merit thorough investigation. We've been rebuffed, rebuffed and ignored in that regard. We'll only succeed in having a fair and bipartisan investigation if our subpoena procedures are changed. And I'll continue to urge you to do this and hope the bipartisan gesture you're making today will not be uh, the last of the minority uh, we'll see. Now, you talked in your opening statement about uh, charges that have been in the press from Johnny Chung. Uh, we've heard a lot about that. But what uh, we have not yet been able to work out is to allow members of this committee to publicly talk about what Johnny Chung said to us in private. And I won't go into any of those details because we're all honor bound not to discuss what was said to us in that discussion. But I must say, without going into any details, that it's different, far different than what has been reported in the press. We need to uh, resolve this question so that uh, members will be able to publicly report what was said to us. And I want to caution my colleagues and anybody else watching this hearing, Johnny Chung made allegations regarding Hazel O'Leary, who was Secretary of Energy, that turned out to be uh, uh, without any uh, factual merit. I want to raise uh, two other issues, both of which trouble me, for my Republican and Democratic colleagues to consider with regard to this immunity request. The first is that we don't have proffers for any of these witnesses. It's a dangerous practice to grant immunity without proffers that indicate the value of the testimony the witnesses will provide. Given the unusual circumstances of today's immunity request, I won't object on this basis, but I completely understand if the lack of information creates reservations for members of the committee. We ought not to allow this sort of thing to happen in the future. Secondly, the Justice Department objects uh, to granting immunity to Kent Law. They don't object to granting immunity to Kent Law. Uh, they're willing to waive their objection, provided the committee guarantees confidentiality to any information Mr. Law gives us. The Justice Department, of course, is the agency that will be called upon to enforce the law. We can't bring any prosecutions from this committee. We can only refer to law enforcement, particularly the Justice Department. Our ideas are where uh, legal action, criminal legal action, ought to be uh, in, uh, initiated. Now, this committee does not have a good track record on safeguarding sensitive information, so I want to highlight this issue and ask that the chairman remind the members and all the staff that this is an absolute requirement that must be observed. With those reservations, Mr. Chairman, and with thanks to you for the two rules changes that you're supporting, I'm going to urge my colleagues support uh, immunity for Nancy Lee, Irene Wu, uh, Larry Wong, and uh, Kent Law. Thank you, Mr. Waxman. Appreciate that. Uh, just make a couple brief comments before we uh, uh, call for the vote. Uh, our, our rules, uh, the practice that you're talking about was uh, agreements between Mr. Hamilton and his uh, associates in the October surprise and the Iran-Contra investigations. However, the rules were the same as ours. Uh, the practice may have been different, but the rules were consistent. Uh, regarding uh, the proffers, I think that's a very, an important issue that's been raised, I believe, by uh, Mr. Konjorski in the past. Uh, majority staff with no uh, real assistance from the minority have investigated the witnesses as thoroughly as possible and talked to other witnesses. Unfortunately, many witnesses have taken the fifth or fled, as we've, we've talked about. Uh, 
The Justice Department has signed off on all four of these witnesses, including Kent Law, but they've asked us only to conduct a deposition and not allow them to review that before making it public. The Justice Department has, uh, by signing off, makes clear that DOJ does not believe granting immunity on these individuals will jeopardize any criminal investigation. In fact, the uh, Department of Justice immunized two of the witnesses already, Nancy Lee and Irene Wu, and they're satisfied with their testimony. So the, the, the proffers that you're talking about, uh, we don't think is an absolute necessity, even though we've, we've, we've you know, looked into this very thoroughly. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you give me just on one point. Sure, sure. As I understand it, because I wasn't clear, and I just want to make it very clear for the record, and I don't think there's a dispute about this, the Justice Department did object to uh, the deposition of Kent Law, but they waived their objection on the condition of confidentiality That's right. to be respected by this committee. That's right. And we the gentleman yield. And we will respect that. Let me just say one other Thank thing. You. Regarding Johnny Chung, uh, it was agreed by everybody, including the minority, when Mr. Chung came in for an informal meeting last year that we would not release any of the information that was in that meeting. And uh, when you asked at our last hearing that I uh, uh, write a letter to his attorney asking that he uh, uh, agree to allow that testimony to be made public, his attorney did respond and say that he would not uh, uh, sign off on that. So we're honor bound to not let that information out. So I, I think with the, with the chairman yield, please. Yes, gentlemen. Um, from just so I understand, I'm, I'm most concerned about the uh, immunization of Mr. Kent Law, and I have the, the letter, April 22nd, 1998 letter to you from the Justice Depar U.S. Department of Justice Criminal Division, Mark M. Richard, which sets out seven, seven conditions with which they that they agreed to be followed. Will this grant of immunity um, be in accordance with those seven conditions? It certainly will. Whatever the Justice Department requested, we have agreed to and will honor our commitment to them. Thank you. Is there further discussion? If not, uh, since we don't have all the members here and since it requires a two-thirds majority vote, um, we need uh, two-thirds here. We need 30. How many do we have? Okay, well, first of all, I'll now call up my amendment to the committee rules and the committee document protocol, and I'll also call up four immunity resolutions re relating to Irene Wu, Nancy Lee, Larry Wong, and Kent Law, and ask unanimous consent that they be considered in block and as, as read. So we'll consider both together. Without objection, so ordered. Uh, well, we can do that. Uh, How many short are we? Has the, has the staff counted the members? We're about a half dozen short. Uh, as, long as, as long as we have agreement from everybody that uh, uh, we will not cut the vote short, we'll go ahead and start the roll call, and then uh, we'll try to round up everybody as the roll call takes place. Without objection, that's what we'll do. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Burton? Mr. Burton votes aye. What are we voting on? Mr. Gilman? Point of parliamentary inquiry. The gentleman will state his point. We are voting, as I understand it, members of here, over here are asking for clarification, on the uh, unanimous consent agreed to proposition of the rules change and the immunity in one pack. In one block. In block. block. Clerk will continue to call the roll. Mr. Gilman? Mr. Hastert? Mr. Hastert votes yes. Mrs. Morella? Yes. Mrs. Morella votes yes. Mr. Shays? Mr. Shays votes yes. Mr. Cox? Ms. Ross Layton? Mr. McHugh? Mr. Horn? Aye. Mr. Horn votes aye. Mr. Micah? Aye. Mr. Micah votes aye. Mr. Davis of Virginia? Mr. McIntosh? Aye. Mr. McIntosh votes aye. Mr. Souter? Aye. 
Mr. Scarborough? Mr. Shattuck? Aye. Mr. Shattuck votes aye. Mr. LaTourette? Aye. Mr. LaTourette votes aye. Mr. Sanford? Mr. Sununu? Aye. Mr. Sununu votes aye. Mr. Sessions? Aye. Mr. Sessions votes aye. Mr. Pappas? Aye. Mr. Pappas votes aye. Mr. Snowbarger? Mr. Snowbarger votes aye. Mr. Barr? Mr. Miller? Aye. Mr. Miller votes aye. Mr. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Lewis votes aye. Mr. Waxman? Mr. Waxman votes aye. Mr. Lantos? Mr. Lantos votes aye. Mr. Wise? Mr. Wise votes aye. Mr. Owens? Mr. Towns? Mr. Kanjorski? Mr. Kanjorski votes aye. Mr. Condent? Mr. Condent votes aye. Mr. Sanders? Mrs. Maloney? Mr. Barrett? Mr. Barrett votes aye. Ms. Norton? Aye. Ms. Norton votes aye. Mr. Fatah? Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Cummings votes yes. Mr. Kucinich? Yes. Mr. Kucinich votes yes. Mr. Bogoyevich? Mr. Bogoyevich votes aye. Mr. Davis of Illinois? Mr. Davis of Illinois votes aye. Mr. Tierney? Yes. Mr. Tierney votes yes. Mr. Turner? Mr. Turner votes aye. Mr. Allen? Mr. Allen votes aye. Mr. Ford? Mr. Ford votes aye. Mr. Gilman? Aye. Mr. Gilman votes aye. Mr. Cox? Ms. Ross Layton? Aye. Ms. Ross Layton votes aye. Mr. McHugh? Mr. Davis of Virginia? Mr. Souter? Mr. Souter votes aye. Mr. Scarborough? Mr. Sanford? Mr. Barr? Mr. Owens? I'm sorry, could you repeat? Mr. Owens votes aye. Mr. Towns? Mr. Sanders? Mrs. Maloney? Mr. Fatah? Mr. Cox? Mr. McHugh? Mr. McHugh votes aye. Mr. Davis of Virginia? Mr. Scarborough? Mr. Sanford? Mr. Barr? Mr. Towns? Mr. Sanders? Mrs. Maloney? Aye. Mrs. Maloney votes aye. Mr. Fatah? Mr. Fatah votes aye. Mr. Cox? Mr. Davis of Virginia?
Mr. Scarborough? Mr. Sanford? Mr. Barr? Mr. Towns? Mr. Sanders? Mr. Cox? Mr. Davis of Virginia? On uh, Mr. Waxman's recommendation, I vote aye. Mr. Davis of Virginia votes aye. Mr. Scarborough? Mr. Sanford? Aye. Mr. Sanford votes aye. Mr. Barr? Mr. Towns? Re regular order. Mr. Sanders? Okay. Okay. If, uh, if there's no uh, further members wandering in, uh, we'll conclude the vote. The clerk will report the tally. Mr. Chairman, there are 39 ayes. Okay, there are 39 ayes. Uh, it's unanimous. Mr. Uh, Chairman? Uh, Mr. Waxman? I, I just wanted to point out a uh, special uh, commendation for uh, Mr. Condit and Mr. Shays for yes. uh, their role in, in getting us to this point. Well, I want to join you in that uh, regard. I think both of them worked very hard, and uh, you're not going over to that side, are you, Shays? <laughs> <laughs> Could we ask unanimous consent to let Mr. Scarborough vote? He just arrived. Is there any objection? If not, Mr. Scarborough, you want to cast your vote? <laughs> okay. Duly recognized. Clerk will report the new tally. Mr. Chairman, there are 40 ayes. Hey, let me just say to the minority before everybody leaves, I appreciate your cooperation. I appreciate the majority's cooperation. Perhaps we can proceed forward and get more accomplished now, and I want to thank everybody. With that, this meeting stands adjourned. Now our program schedule. Coming up, remarks from former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, Fujitsu Limited Chairman Takumo Yamamoto, and former Soviet Union President Mikhail Gorbachev. Then Commerce Secretary...